Hello and welcome back to Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. This is part two of my quick introduction to Python 3 programming. Today we're going to cover three very powerful tools in Python, lists, loops, and functions. Again, we're going to be working in a Jupyter Notebook, so take a minute now and get your Jupyter Notebook set up and ready to follow along with the lecture. As I mentioned in part one of this lecture series, I'm following along with the intro to python.org uh, chapters. And the chapters that I'll cover in this video are the introducing lists and introducing functions chapters. Now I won't follow along exactly with what they're doing in there, um, but I'm uh, following along with some of the general ideas that they're covering in that order. So those are great uh, companion reading and companion exercises for these lectures. Okay, so the list in Python is a collection type. Um, and what that means is that using one variable, you can store multiple values. Um, and so, for example, if I were to define um, a new variable, and I'll call this, um, I'll be very specific here, domains of life equals, um, and we can put the archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. Um, and so now, um, if I execute that, um, if I um, execute uh, is a synonym for run that you'll hear me use sometimes, um, but if I now um, just uh, put a, um, a print statement in here, you'll see that I have, um, you'll see that it just prints out that list that I've just created above. Now, the reason that you want to use lists is because um, often because you're applying some operation to the items that are in a list. Um, and the way that you would do that is you would iterate over the values that are contained in this list. Um, and so the uh, most common way to do that in Python is using what's known as a for loop. Um, and so what that would look like is um, if I were to say for domain in um, you can see that I can iterate over those items and I can print them one at a time. Um, so that is one of the ways that you can access values in a list. Um, and that is something that you do if you want to access all of the values in a list one at a time. Um, if you were, um, we'll take a minute and look at this in a little bit more detail um, in just a few minutes. Um, but first I want to show you the, uh, uh, or another way that you can access those values. Um, you can also access them, access them directly with indices. Um, and one thing that you just kind of have to get used to when you're working with programming languages is that most programming languages start counting um, with the value zero. And so if you want to access the first element in a list, you would tell Python that you want the item at position zero in that list. Um, what this looks like is if I wanted to access, say, just the first value, um, I would say, I could say print domains of life, and then I use the square brackets and then the element number. Um, so the square brackets are syntax that you use to access an entry in a list by its position number. And so if I run that, you can see that there I've accessed element zero, which is the first item in our list. Um, if I copy that and paste it down here and just edit that so that I'm accessing entry number one, that gives me the second entry in the list. If I copy that and paste it and edit it so it's entry number two, that gives me the third element in the list. Um, I'll also show you um, what happens if you go beyond the bounds of this list. So let's say 
I wanted to access some entry in this list that didn't exist. Um, and so here I'm trying to access entry three. If I run that, I'll get an index error in Python and it's telling me that the index that I provided is out of range for this list. Um, that's just an, another important error to be aware of. It's another one of the common ones that you'll see in Python. And so it's good just to know um, what, what that looks like and what it's telling you. Um, here, you know, if I wanted to change and fix that, I could just change that uh, three to a two. Um, and so now I'm just accessing something that is in bounds um, for that list. Um, there's another handy trick here. Um, if you want to access, um, I'm just going to delete that cell. Um, if you want to access an element in a list, or say the last element in a list, but you don't know how long the list is, um, there's another bit of syntax that you could use here where you could index a negative number. And so if I index negative one, that's telling me that I want, that's, uh, that's telling Python that I want the last element in this domains of life list. Um, if I, uh, similarly, let's say I copy that and paste it, I could access element negative two. Um, that would give me that um, second to last item in the list. Um, and if I did negative three, that would give me that third to last item in the list. Um, I believe that if I try and access negative four, I should get an index error. Um, yeah, so if I go negative four, that would give me the fourth to last entry in the list, which doesn't exist in a list of lengths, uh, length three. And so I'm gonna get an index error. Um, okay, so um, the, um, so now let's go back and let's look at um, that for loop again. Um, there's a few parts of that that um, I just want to point out to you. Um, and so if I were to look at this just piece by piece, um, what I see is the first thing I see is this word for. That is a Python keyword. Um, and so that is um, basically like a built-in that Python knows about. And that's why my syntax highlighter is highlighting it in green. It's to, it uh, is saying that that is a word that Python has reserved for something. Um, the next bit of information I have here is the word domain. What this is, is a variable name that will be used inside this list and it will iteratively be set to each entry in the list. Um, and so as we loop through the, um, the three domains of life here, each one of those is getting set to a new variable that is defined as domain. And that's why we can say print domain inside of this for loop. Um, before that, outside of this for loop, the variable domain had not been um, defined. Um, in is the next bit here. This is another Python keyword, um, and it is basically um, describing, um, it's, it's a portion of the for loop. And so um, this is basically saying for each domain in this list that I'm providing. So the in is preceding the list. Um, the semicolon, or sorry, the colon here, is um, defining the beginning of the list body, or sorry, the beginning of the loop body. And so um, everything after this colon, um, following some level of indentation, is what happens inside the body of this loop. Now, just to clean up my display a little bit, I'm gonna delete some of these lower cells that I have, um, and I'm gonna just experiment with a few things um, in this one cell. Um, and so we already saw this. I'm just going to run that one more time. Um, now, when we're inside this body loop, 
um, whatever we put in here is going to happen each time we're iterating through this loop. And so if I were to do something like say, um, say, um, that um, and you'll remember from the last lecture I showed you that you can use the plus uh, the addition operator to join strings together and so what I can do is I can uh, make this um, print out some additional text and again you can see that everything that's happening inside of this for loop body so i can even put something else in here uh, here let's do that um, you can see that even something that's on a different line because it's within this for loop body um, will get uh, will get run every single time we loop through um, the last thing um, that I want to show you here is how you would end a for loop. And so what you would do is you would have some area that is not indented. And if we put some additional text down here, um, you can see that that text that is no longer indented um, so what I have here, that's all. Um, this line, because it's not indented, happens after the for loop um, has uh, completed running. And so just to summarize that, the for loop runs this bit of text that is indented here. And when it gets to the end of the list, so after it has printed the uh, information on the last element in the list, it and the execution of that for loop ends um, and any code that follows that then has a chance to run. And so that's when um, this last uh, print statement that I have included here is run for the last time. Um, another thing that's handy to do um, with lists, like sometimes you might want the um, the value or sorry the uh, index of the elements in a list um, and so a way that you can do that um, is using um, a function called enumerate um, the way that that would work is you would say something like for index domain in enumerate Then you could say something like look at that I think that should run okay oops um, okay so I just had to fix an error there I'll talk about that in just a second um, but what I'm saying here is the domain archaea is at index 0 in the list the domain bacteria is at index one in the list. The domain eukarya is at index two in the list. Um, and so what this is doing, and this is, um, I'm mostly showing this because this is a syntax that you'll run into at other times in the future. But if you had more than one um, value that you're looping over here, you can uh, delineate those with a comma. 
and you will get some value, the first value assigned to um, the first variable that you're putting in here and the second value assigned to the second variable that you're putting in here. Um, this function enumerate, I'll just show you, um, don't worry if you don't follow exactly what I'm doing here, um, but what this is um, effectively doing is it is creating these little um, two element entries um, that contain the index and then contain the string of text um, that is in domains of life. And so it is assigning a number to each value in our list. Okay, so you saw an error um, pop up, and that actually reminds me of something I meant to talk about in the part one lecture, but, um, but forgot to cover. Um, so in the part one lecture, I showed you that we can add strings, and so we did something like, um, We did something like this in the last lecture, and we saw that what that does is it the, the plus operator concatenates these strings with one another. And so here I'm concatenating three strings, the text hello, a single space, and the text Greg. Um, similarly, we could apply um, the addition operator to numbers. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm saying 42 plus 5. Um, and so those are two integers. Um, and when I apply the plus operator in this way, it does integer addition, which is um, exactly what we would expect. Now, what happened above um, when I got that error is I essentially tried to merge or I tried to add a string and a number. And so what do you think happens? What does, that, what does that mean to you, adding some text and a number together? If, it does, if it's not something that makes a whole lot of sense to you, um, then you're on the right track with how Python is thinking about this. Um, so when I run that, um, what's happening is I'm getting a type error coming back. Um, and it's saying that uh, basically what it's saying is that this second element must be a string, not an integer. The reason for that is that Python knows how to add strings to each other. That is this concatenate operation. It knows how to add integers to each other. Um, that is this integer addition operation, but it doesn't know how to add an integer to a string. And so it's gonna give me an error if I try and do that. Um, of course, if I were to put this in quotes, that would work just fine. Here you can see it's just giving me this little weird bit of text, hello, with the number one attached to the end of it. Um, but another way that I can do that, um, so like that wouldn't have worked up here, because if I just put quotes around index, I'll just show you what that would have done. You can probably imagine but it's going to think I literally mean the string index. Um, and so that is not, of course, what we want, or not, of course, what we were going for there. Um, and so what you can do is you can tell Python that uh, by using this function called string, so basically I'm saying str, open parentheses, putting my value one in there, close parentheses. What I'm saying is I want you to treat this number one as a string. And then it works just fine um, because we're telling Python that this is not an integer. We're saying create a string first from this integer. Um, and so um, if I were to do something like say string 42, that is gonna give me the string 42. You can tell it's a string because it has these quotes before and after it. Um, if I were to say have the string 42, um, I could also tell Python to create an int or an integer out of it. 
And then what it'll do is it'll give me the number 42. Um, in this case, that's an integer. So I could do something like 42 plus five and it'll do a mathematical operation on that. Um, now you can, uh, you can get another error from Python. For example, if you said, I want you to create an int out of this string, hello, that's not something that Python knows how to do. Um, and so it says, um, basically it's giving you a value error here where it is saying um, that it doesn't know how to create a base 10 integer from the text, hello. Not too surprising, I don't know how to do that either. Um, so that is just a quick introduction to like how you would change the type of a Python value after you've created it. Okay, the next thing um, that I wanna show you with, um, with lists is I wanna show how you would edit a list. Um, so, if we wanted to modify um, the uh, list that we had already created, um, there's a few ways that we can do that. Um, we can um, add new items to the list, and I, I realize this doesn't really make sense anymore with my domains of life example. Um, so let me um, let me change gears here and um, just create a list of names. Um, so now I have a list of names. Oops, I haven't defined name and so I get a name error. So that was a typo there. Um, and so I meant to say print names. I said print name and Python told me name error name is not defined. If I do print names instead, um, then I get that list that I just created. Um, so you can append items to a list. And so, um, for example, I could say um, names.append Greg. And if I print names again, then you'll see that all of these names are now in the list. Um, I can iterate over the names in this list. Just like the list above. Now, if I wanted to change something about those. Um, so I wanted to edit an entry um, in place. So edit an entry that is already in that list. I can do that using the index. And so for example, I could say names zero. And let's say I want to capitalize that. I can say names zero equals Alice. And then if I say print names, you can see that Alice is now capitalized. Um, now, this is maybe a little bit trickier, but I'm just gonna show you how to put some of these ideas together. And so let's say I wanted to go through and capitalize every name in this list. Um, I could do something like this. I could say for index name in enumerate names, Oh, and I've got a little bit of, uh, I've got a syntax error here. Um, and so I, this is a common um, type of error that you might get in Python is um, I use the wrong variable name. And so in here I had name index and I meant to have names index. Um, and so if I run that, 
what I did here was I enumerated the names and so I got the index and the name um, and then for each of those values I said um, name uh, or sorry names index so I indexed into that location in the list so that I could set it to something and I set that equal to name.title which converts a string to title case so now if I say print names I have Alice Bob Carol Greg where the first um, the first letter of each of those is um, capitalized. Um, just to show you what that title does on something else, um, we will, um, let me just put the name of our class in here, Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. And then if I um, call title on that, um, that will convert that to, um, or it'll capitalize it in title case. And so the first letter of each word is capitalized here. Um, okay, so one other thing that I wanna show you now, um, I mentioned um, in the beginning of the part one lecture that there is something that's a little bit um, unintuitive about how um, Jupyter Notebooks work and something that is a little bit different than how um, a program that you might um, write, like say a script that you might write would work. Um, I mention this now because this is a common trap that people fall into when they're first learning programming using the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so you'll see here that like I have some cells up here that I ran um, and like when I ran this up here, I said for name and names, print hello name exclamation. And it printed hello Alice, hello Bob, Carol, Greg. Um, that was before I had converted these um, to title case. Um, but if I were to come back up here and rerun this cell, you'll see that when it runs this time, it has the updated uh, updated names list. And so now when I print this out, it has the title case for each one of these names. And so it says, hello, Alice, hello, Bob, where the first letter is in capital. Now, when you're writing a script in Python, the flow tends to be um, pretty linear. Um, you can move around at spots, but you're typically not doing something like what we just did here, where you're running through some code and then you have the opportunity to selectively run um, some line above again. Um, so for example, like imagine here, I came and ran that line again, and I ran this again. You can see that we're, we're kind of now in a pretty funny state because um, it's a little bit hard to follow exactly what happened here like what was the flow through this notebook um, a good thing to think about like if you ever get lost in the flow and how um, this is working just come up here um, go to stop go to kernel restart um, actually I meant to do restart and clear output and what that'll do is it'll just re it'll get everything back to a fresh state and it will remove any output that you have in there. And so this is, if you get confused about what you've run before and what you haven't run before in your notebook, just stop um, and start over again doing what I just showed. Um, and so you can see now if I run that again, this is now the first thing that has run in this notebook. Um, and so we're basically back to this fresh state where all we have is this code, but the code hasn't been run yet. And so I'm just hitting shift enter um, so I can run through all of this um, and just get us back to a nice clean state. Of course, that was that error that we had before. And we've now run every cell in this notebook in order one time. Um, 
Okay, so I think that um, that is what I wanted to cover um, initially from this um, uh, from this Python uh, lists and for loops uh, chapter. Um, there are some nice exercises in here, so I would encourage you to do the reading and to work through um, some of the exercises. The next thing that we'll do is we will move on to the um, functions chapter. Um, and so I'm now on the introducing functions um, section of introduction to Python. I'm going to save this notebook um, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one. I'm going to name this bio 450. Python part two functions. You can name this um, the same or come up with your own name for this notebook. Okay, so a function in Python or a function in a programming language is basically like a bit of code that you want to um, be able to call to carry out some specific activity. We've already used a couple of functions in Python. Um, so for example, the um, we've called print many times. Print is a function um, in Python. Um, we also called title case, or sorry, title. Um, title is a special kind of function that operates on um, a Python data type. Um, but similar idea um, as, as the print function, for example. Um, and um, when you think of a function, um, you can really think of this as like a mathematical function that you may have learned about in, um, say, high school geometry. Um, so you probably remember seeing functions of the form y equals f of x, um, where f of x is defined by some operation that is applied to x. Um, and so same idea in Python, like there's some input that you would provide um, in the y equals f of x case, that would be um, x would be the input. Some operations are gonna be applied to that, and then you're gonna get some output from that. Um, and that output might be um, y in that example. Um, so in Python, um, what you can do if you want to create a new function is you use the keyword def um, and that stands for um, define a function. Um, and so the next thing that Python needs is a name. And so I'm just going to create a really simple um, function here. I'm going to call this add one. Um, and we'll say that this takes a value x and it returns x plus one. Um, and so um, the, the parts of this here is again that def keyword, which is what you use to define a function. Then you, defi then you provide a name for that function. This is how you'll refer to it later on in your code. Um, open parentheses, and then any of the variables that you wanna provide as input. Here I'm only providing a single um, function as input, or sorry, a single variable as input called x, but we'll do a more complicated one in just a minute. Then I close that parenthesis and I provide a colon, and then I have a, um, an indented function body. And that indented body is very similar to the indented body that we saw for the for loops. So everything following this colon that is indented will be, will be executed when this function is called. Anything that shows up after this um, will, be, um, will be executed after that function is defined. So let me just go ahead and delete that for right now. Run that again. And you'll see that when I define this function, I haven't actually applied it to anything yet. And so I don't get any output from Python. If I wanted to apply this, 
what I would now do is I would now call this function. And when I call the function, I would provide some value to it. And when I run that, it is going to call this add one function. X will be set to whatever value I've provided. So in this case, 42. And then this uh, internal bit of code where it says return, this is another Python keyword, and it's defining what I want to return as output from this function. Um, and so I'm returning x plus 1. Um, and so in this case, it'll be 42 plus 1, or of course, 43. Um, I could define some variable, like I could say my age um, equals, um, and if I think about that for a minute, I can remember um, that actually, yes, I am 42 years old, so that's a happy coincidence there. Um, so if I say my age equals 42, um, I could then say add one to my age, um, and that will give me the same thing. Um, and so um, in this case, what happens is I have defined a new variable, my age, and then I've provided my age to the add one function, and I get the value 43 coming back. Um, so that's a pretty straightforward function in Python. Um, let's define one that is um, a little bit more challenging or a little bit more complicated, I should say. Um, so let's call this one um, exponentiate. Um, and this will um, take two variables, we'll say base and power. Um, and here, just to show you a little bit more of what can happen inside of a function body, um, let's put some print statements. Um, so I'll say print Okay, so now I'm doing something a little bit more complex in here. Um, I have, again, used the def keyword. I have provided a name to my function, and this time I'm providing two variables as input, base and power. Then I'm saying, um, I'm putting a print statement in here that's gonna print some information about the operation that's being performed and then it's going to perform that exponentiation and return the result to the caller. And so remember, if I just run that, then nothing happens here. Um, that is because I haven't actually called this function yet. I have only defined the function. Um, if I want to call the function, Um, and let's say I want to raise five to the power of 10. Um, I can uh, define, I can uh, set that up to call it. I can run it and it'll tell me raising five to the power of 10 and you get this really big number coming back. Um, and so there you see an example of a function that takes two variables as input and is um, uh, exponent, uh, using those to essentially raise base to the power of power um, and printing something and returning that result. Um, this is, um, functions are very useful because they allow you to reuse that code. So as these get more and more complicated, um, you could see that um, defining everything in here could get a bit cumbersome. Um, it could also get a bit error prone. 
Um, and so when you define a function, you're saying this is some operation that I expect to perform multiple times. And so I'm going to put this in this little function so I can call it multiple times without having to define that every time. Um, so let's look at a um, bioinformatics example now. Um, so this one, um, I haven't given you all the tools yet to do this on your own. Um, so mostly just kind of watch this or maybe pause the video and see if you could figure out how you would do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function that will compute the GC content of some sequence that I have provided as input. Um, and so I'm going to define a function here called GC content. And this is going to take a sequence as input. Um, I'm going to define a variable here called count g. And I'm going to set that equal to sequence.count g. I'm then going to define another variable here called count c, which I will then um, assign to the value of sequence.countc. Finally, I'm going to define a variable called sequence length, and that will take uh, that will get set to the length of this sequence. And so len is a keyword that you can apply to a Python string or to a Python list, um, and it'll tell you um, how long that string or that list is. Um, if I wanted to return the GC content now, um, I could say return count G plus count C divided by sequence length. Now, if I have defined all this correctly, um, I should be able to now apply that. So let's apply that to this sequence, which has three A's, three C's, three G's, and three T's. And so its GC content should be 0 0.5. Um, and it looks like I did get all that um, defined correctly. Um, you never really know until you run it if you had a syntax error or something like that sneak in there. Um, now, a few things that I should mention here. Um, so at one point, I typed count underscore lowercase c. Um, and so if I did that um, and I tried to run this again, I wouldn't get an error when I'm defining the function, but when I try and run it, I would get a name error. And this is saying count c lowercase c is not defined. This shows you that Python variable names are case sensitive. So lowercase is different than an uppercase. Um, if I fix that, I can go ahead and rerun those two cells, and this will, of course, work again. Um, the other thing I'll mention here is um, the order of operations um, that Python uses is basically the same as what you're used, uh, you're used to. So I was always taught the mnemonic, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, that meant that parentheses um, come before exponentiation, so that's the please, excuse, and then my dear, multiplication and division, um, and then finally Aunt Sally, uh, addition and subtraction. And so that same order of operations um, is, uh, is what Python adheres to. And so as long as you think about using parentheses in the way that you normally would, um, and your order of operations, um, you should do okay when you're putting together mathematical formulas like this. Um, okay, so I'm going to wrap up there today. We have really just begun to scratch the surface um, today with lists, for loops, and functions. 
Um, there's a lot more that we can do with this. These really um, start to form the building blocks of your programs. Um, and when we do some exercises, or if you're following along with exercises in Introduction to Python, you'll get a lot of experience um, experimenting with these uh, different features. Okay, thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.